Hello everyone, Richard here, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the four bosses currently featured in Killing Floor 2, and the original boss from the first Killing Floor game, The Patriarch. Previously known as Kevin Claimley, founder and CEO of Horizon Biotech, he transformed into what he is today as more information about his cloning efforts was leaked. Fearing his company would be shut down, he had his closest scientists install the most advanced weapon systems into his body. These included the Stalker's cloaking technology and growth hormones from the Flesh Pound. He was responsible for the initial attacks on London and the inevitable fall of England. The Patriarch is unique compared to the other bosses, possessing a stronger emphasis on ranged attacks rather than melee damage, although his punches, kicks, and tentacle arm can still deal a lot of damage. Technically speaking, the Patriarch has the lowest health pool out of all the other bosses, with health ranging from 2,812 to 18,242. For comparison, Hans Volter will have a health range of 5,268 to 38,061. These ranges represent the minimum amount of health a boss can have playing solo on normal difficulty and range up to the health values on a 6 player Hell on Earth game. However, due to his resistances and how he takes damage to different body parts, as well as his healing mechanic, his overall durability will roughly be on par with the other three bosses. Displayed now is the health potential for the Patriarch depending on difficulty and the number of active players. Like many enemies, the Patriarch has a complicated hit zone system, in fact the most complicated out of all the bosses thus far. To simplify it, we can avoid aiming for weapons and metal portions of his body. This includes his left arm and his left leg, all of which will multiply incoming damage by 0.1, an effective 90% reduction. His right hand, right leg, and body all incur penalties but much smaller than the previously mentioned hit zones. His abdomen, hips, and oddly enough his head will not lessen or worsen incoming damage. His weakest areas will be his tentacle if it's being exposed, and his right upper arm, indicated by the glowing green flesh. Strictly speaking, he isn't vulnerable to any damage types, as he doesn't take any additional multipliers from any damage category, but vulnerability is relative. Overall, the most effective weapons include slashing, bludgeon, ballistic shell, such as grenade launcher impact damage, and freeze damage. Due to the large amount of metal on his body, there's only a small damage penalty for microwave weapons, receiving a straight 0.9 multiplier. Some machine guns, assault rifles, handguns, high caliber rifles, fire, and piercing damage will all receive a 0.5 multiplier, and shotguns and explosives will receive a slightly higher 0.4 multiplier. However, toxic damage will get reduced incredibly, dealing only 5% of its base damage. For afflictions, again due to his heavy metallic construction, he will be more affected by EMP, but he can also be upset easily by freeze affliction and fire panic. This makes firebugs, sharpshooters, survivalists, and berserkers very good at temporarily disrupting his attacks. Moving on to the behavior of the Patriarch, he can actually be quite dangerous. Being able to cloak himself regularly, especially on his initial entrance and subsequently after healing. Since it is the same technology used by the Stalkers, Commandos can detect him from far away and give a pretty substantial combat advantage to you and your team. He prefers to attack those who are separated or hidden from the party, and will build aggro slightly faster against hidden and separated players compared to other members of the party. The Patriarch will also learn what attacks deal the most damage, however this can be used to the player's advantage which we'll discuss later. He has five basic attack types, melee, minigun, missile, mortar, and tentacle grab. The melee, while not nearly as annoying as Hans Volter's combos, can still damage a player heavily and kill wounded ones instantly, although this can be preferable to absorbing a full missile barrage or minigun barrage. His minigun attack can be particularly devastating due to the high fire rate and hit scan damage as opposed to firing ballistic projectiles like with his rockets and mortars. Initially, he will remain stationary when using this attack, but during later phases, appearing sooner, on higher difficulties, he will be able to fire on the move. His minigun attack will cancel once no targets are within his line of sight, 
or they have been terminated. The Patriarch does have a minimum attack distance, so giving him a hug when you hear him mentioning something about guns will cancel his attack. This works better on solo or if all players cooperate as he can always target another member of your team. The missile attack in my opinion is a bit more interesting, firing a salvo of missiles in a single direction, although the missiles do diverge from their original path slightly. This can be avoided more easily as the missiles do take time to reach their target, but it's best to run for cover when he audibly cues a missile attack, such as saying, one in the pipe. Like the minigun attack, the missiles do have a minimum range, meaning the hug strategy is still viable with the same stipulations. The last of his ranged attacks, the mortar, fires missiles into the air, which then arc down and target players. The salvo can consist of anything from 1 to 5 missiles, meaning you may have to keep running after you hear the first impact. This attack will not appear until he is healed at least once and has a 10 second cooldown. If you struggle to outmaneuver his missiles, stay in hallways or rooms with low ceilings, or do your best to finish him off before he can heal the first time. His final attack is the Tentacle Grab, which extends his chest tentacle out of his body and brings the player within arm's reach, allowing him to hit you with a follow-up melee attack. Like with mortars, he will not use this until he is healed at least once. If you do get pulled in and sent back, he will likely switch to a minigun or missile attack, so it's best to heal and seek shelter after being tossed. Once the Patriarch reaches 42.5% health, additional Zeds will spawn in to assist him. The amount and threat level of the Zeds will be determined by the number of players and the difficulty level. Once he drops to 35%, he will begin to flee to go heal. Fleeing can be indicated by him cloaking and seeming to run away from the battle, and it is at this point that you and your team need to make a decision. It is relatively easy, especially on lower difficulties, to outright kill the Patriarch before he can go heal, preventing him from using his more aggressive behaviors. Some things to consider are that if you do not successfully kill him, it will not impact what HP he returns with. It will depend on what heal he is on and what difficulty. As a rule of thumb, his first heal is the strongest, his second the weakest, and his third and final heal somewhere in between. If you do not successfully kill him, you will only be wasting ammo, so depending on your ammo count and team composition, it may be best to let him heal. This time can also be very valuable to you as long as you keep Zeds in check and can allow you to relocate, rearm, and heal. Be advised, if the Patriarch sees you killing a Zed upon his return, there is a chance he will focus aggro on you. Again, this can be used to your team's advantage, especially if you have a tanky class like a SWAT or Berserker. Now that we have an idea of what the Patriarch is capable of and his relative weaknesses, we can talk strategy both as a team and individually for each perk. First, the Berserker will have a relatively easy time fighting the Patriarch due to his overall high durability, quick movement speed with Skirmisher, and the Patriarch being relatively weak to almost all of the Berserker's attacks. Paired with a Medic, you should be absorbing much of his aggro and keeping him from attacking weaker players that are less effective at close range, such as Demolitionists and Sharpshooters. Remember to parry and block his attacks as best you can. This will not only reduce damage taken and lessen the load on your Medic, but also give you a good damage bonus when paired with the parry skill. This isn't something you're going to master easily, but given enough practice, you will dramatically improve your odds in close quarters against the Patriarch. Next up, the Commando plays a very special role when dealing with the Patriarch. While his weapons won't be doing the lion's share of the damage, his ability to spot him from a distance can give your team a pretty decisive combat advantage, and allow you to lower his health significantly before he engages. If you must engage him, Aim for the fleshy part of his upper arm, as it not only will increase the damage dealt, but also present a larger target and a much more visible one at that. Once he retreats, you can either pursue him and betray his position to assist in a takedown or help eliminate any trash units that spawn. Supports can be very valuable, and their value increases especially on higher difficulty and with a full team. Not only will their doomsticks inflict massive damage with their alt fire attacks, 
They will also be able to supply ammunition and armor with the resupply skill, a must have for boss waves. The ability to replenish armor is very helpful for SWATs, Berserkers, and Survivalists as they become significantly more durable with the addition of armor. I would also highly recommend Salvo and Tight Choke as these will increase your damage and allow you to remain accurate without having to stand next to the Patriarch. Like with any boss, especially once you reach Suicidal and Hell on Earth, field medics are critical to a full party's success. Not only will a support focused medic be able to effectively heal wounded players, but they can also provide valuable buffs with Adrenaline Shot, Focused Injection, and Coagulant Booster. Symbiotic Health is also very helpful, as this will essentially eliminate your need to self-heal as long as you stay on top of your team heals. You won't be dealing out a big percentage of the damage, but again, you're really not supposed to. Once trash enemies start spawning, help keep them at bay, as they can cause players focused on damaging the Patriarch to become cornered, trapped, or just take unnecessary damage. Next, the Demolitionist will be able to deal substantial damage despite only dealing 40% of your normal damage thanks to the Patriarch's explosive damage resistance. Focus on raw damage output rather than trying to balance crowd control and tier skill selection. Bombardier, high impact rounds, and armor piercing rounds can increase base damage by up to 95% if you manage to strike one of the Patriarch's weak spots. Like with any other perk, you want to focus fire on his weaker upper arm for the best results. While the Seeker 6 can be more forgiving as a missed shot only results in a loss of 1 6 of your magazine damage potential as opposed to 100% with the RPG, the tried and true Russian anti-tank weapon will be better overall and can help facilitate in quick takedowns when he decides to flee. The firebug is unusually effective against the Patriarch, with the flamethrower, husk launcher, and microwave gun all being capable of quickly stacking damage. There are some additional benefits that firebugs do provide as well. Not only will fire cause damage over time, but also reveal his position as long as he remains ignited. For that reason, I would recommend Barbecue and Napalm, as both increase the duration of fire damage. This also becomes very important when he begins to flee, as the damage can be significant enough to slay him before he has a chance to heal, although this happens far less as his overall HP increases. Heat Wave can also give you valuable breathing room if the Patriarch directs his aggro at you and outclasses Firestorm on more claustrophobic maps. Our sixth perk, Gunslinger, is all round good at killing bosses due to their high mobility and high damage output. Exploiting both of these will be critical to your success, as their only durability increase is against bullets, which is minimal considering how quickly the Patriarch can stack damage if caught out in the open. In the case of the Patriarch, I would almost recommend using Bonebreaker over Rack'em Up, However, Rack'em Up is considered to be superior against the other bosses, so you'll have to hedge your bets on this one. Overall though, Bonebreaker isn't a bad choice considering it provides a flat 20% damage bonus and a 30% increased damage to limbs. Next up, the Sharpshooter, which will provide, along with the Demolitionists, Firebug, and Gunslinger, the bulk of your damage output. The newly added M99 anti-material rifle, while incredibly expensive, is extremely effective with good accuracy. While the sharpshooter does mainly focus on headshots, its first two skills can provide a 55% damage bonus for remaining still and crouching. Assuming you have a good berserker taking most of his aggro, this shouldn't be too hard to accomplish. Although like with any perk, you should have a plan to displace once the patriarch switches to his ballistic attacks. Remember that the Patriarch is vulnerable to being frozen, so stacking a couple of cryo grenades can quickly bring him to a halt, giving your team valuable time to either open fire or regroup. Perk number 9, the SWAT is an interesting combination of tank and trash killer, being able to absorb quite a lot of punishment, especially from the Patriarch, thanks to the ability to use heavy armor and their 30% bullet resistance. This means SWATs take less than half of their damage from the minigun and only to their armor assuming you aren't insane and take the heavy armor training skill. Unfortunately, the SWAT grenades are pretty much useless at stunning him and only deal minimal damage. They should be saved for when supporting retinue units get spawned in before he flees. 
Along with Berserkers, Swats should be absorbing much of the unmitigatable damage, allowing for more flimsy classes to focus on dealing damage. Our final perk, the Survivalist, should act as the mourner for the team, filling in any gaps in the team composition thanks to its relatively flexible loadout and perk system. Overall though, they are incredibly durable, possessing a 25% damage resistance and a larger pool of armor than most perks with the added bonus of it being heavy armor. The free store is also very capable against the Patriarch due to his relative vulnerability to ice damage, which, like with the Sharpshooter's Cryo Grenades, can freeze the Patriarch solid, exposing him to your teammate's fire. Overall, the Patriarch is considered one of the tougher bosses featured in Killing Floor 2, being able to reliably heal himself unlike Hans, but possessing very powerful instant killing abilities that can strike at considerable distance. However, if you keep in mind his limitations, and the fact that most of his attacks are easily nullified by the use of cover, he becomes a lot more manageable. Thank you very much for watching, join us next time when we look at Hans Volter. But until then, happy hunting.